Hi, I'm Ash, the producer for Evil Genius 2 here at Rebellion. We are so excited to finally reveal Evil Genius 2 with this brand new trailer. While this trailer is not captured directly from gameplay, we wrote the script to make sure that every element you see is directly related to what you'll be doing in the game. So I've enlisted the help of a couple of colleagues to take you through some of the secrets behind the trailer. Hi, I'm Ian Pestridge, art lead on Evil Genius 2. Hi, I'm Richard Edwards, I'm the lead designer. This is one of the islands of indeterminate location that we have in Evil Genius 2. It's a nice tropical island and we intend to hide a lair in there. So one of the first things a player will be doing um, when they start Evil Genius 2, um, after selecting which of our Evil Geniuses you want to represent you in the game world, you'll then be choosing which of these islands will be your lair. That'll have gameplay effects, it'll imply which forces of justice you're going to be batting heads against most frequently. I'm a fan of these funky shaped helicopters we got. These 60s styled helicopters coming in here. I think that's been the, the watchword for the style throughout the game, isn't it? Is would it fit into the 60s? We're we saying it's spy fi styling. Yeah, I think that's definitely worth calling out. So, yeah, we, we've gone for a 60s spy fi aesthetic, which is taking a lot of designer style uh, 60s look and feel, but uh, giving it a more of a modern technology or close to a modern or even sometimes futuristic technology overhaul. Max walking up onto the island, his ability to kind of see his plans through his, through his monocle mm. was a really nice touch. Like he has, he has the ability to kind of plan ahead the kind of evil lair he's going to build and you can see that through like a, a blueprint vision, an x-ray blueprint vision, which mm. is kind of nice. I think it's worth mentioning the cover operation, at least in passing, just say that, that front that you can see there in kind of the x-ray view is the cover operation, it's kind of the evil genius's um, attempt at putting a honest face on what's really going on. So yellow jumpsuited minions, their main role in the lair is to construct the lair to help you specialise and augment your criminal operation. So the yellow jumpsuited minions are the main workforce that you begin with. They can do a bit of most things without necessarily doing any one thing particularly well. This early scene is to show essentially the, the planning of a blank island and you can see very quickly the worker minions start blocking out the uh, barracks and then through to like a, a major control room and then through to a world domination doomsday device. Which is ultimately why, why your evil genius is doing all of this. Um, the other thing you might notice back there is that we've got verticality in our building. So we've got uh, the minions building stairs up to a new level on the island. Um, so that's going to be more important as the game goes on and you can um, basically choose to protect the more sensitive areas of your lair by building them on higher and more difficult to reach floors. Obviously agents are going to be trying to break into your lair to stop you from taking over the world and organising your defences is a key part of the game, even if that involves just making them climb a flight of stairs before they get where they need to go. So the player will be setting out their lair, uh, asking the minions to build it for them because the player doesn't need to get their hands dirty when it comes to the actual construction. But you can set out rooms, you can set the size of them, the shape of them, you can choose which items go in there. This is basic layer building stuff. So I think the nice way you've described this before, Rich, is talking about each room is almost like a mini Tetris puzzle. So you've got to work within the confines of the layer space, how much you have to work with, where, um, where you can and cannot dig. And then once you've carved out that space, you've got to work with these little Tetris pieces of your furniture and equipment to make the layer work as you want it to. I think as one of our guidelines is, we want to make everything look cool by default and then ask the player to make it look even cooler. Here we've got a big mysterious box. This is representing our uh, doomsday device. This is the player's ultimate um, aim in Evil Genius 2 is to construct your, your evil lair, build up your force of evil, and then construct a doomsday device by which you can threaten and conquer the world. Or dominate the world is probably what I should say. Even though you are an evil genius, even though you are one of the smartest people on the planet, you're still something of an underdog. You'll never have the full army that other countries can bring to bear against you. So you have to work a little underhanded. I think in the trailer we want to make this um, the doomsday device uh, purposefully ambiguous. Um, it's essentially something we want to kind of hold back for now. Yeah, we've got um, something really cool planned yeah. for it. So we've got a <laughs> yellow jumpsuit minion here being trained up through a Rocky S montage scene into a guard. So they're your basic muscle minion um, and they are exactly what they sound like. They are the muscle in your lair before being shipped off to uh, the world map. 
to go out and gather gold. Yeah, and I guess we're trying to um, summarise very quickly in this part of the trailer, essentially, you know, the, the training of minions, and all the roles they can play, and doing it in a kind of a comedy, as you say, almost a, a montage manner, so you quickly kind of see the kind of minions you can level up. So this is the world map itself. You can see there's uh, a bunch of coloured regions there. Those are uh, the regions controlled by the forces of justice, who um, in any other game would probably be the, the protagonists. In our game, the, they're the antagonists. They're working against you, trying to prevent you bringing about doomsday and, and world domination. So during the course of the game, Max has to send out his uh, criminal operatives across the world to do everything from robbing banks to uh, performing heists, recruiting crime lords and henchmen, um, all kinds of nefarious deeds to then bring all of those things back to the lair where it can be used to further uh, augment and supplement your, your criminal enterprise. Yeah, so here we see one of the schemes, one of the uh, kind of the jobs he sends these guys out on, which is essentially to rob a bank of its gold. Um, we kind of told this in a kind of a soul bass cinematic intro manner in a style like that. Just so you can very, very easily understand he's in there stealing gold taking it back to his lair. So here he is back in the lair um, with his stolen loot, admiring it. And then we get our first glimpse of one of the Force of Justice agents. So this is an investigator agent, I believe, Rich? Yes, it is. The investigators, their role in assaulting your lair is ultimately to find targets. Um, they are they're masters of stealth, able to get into your lair without being detected, sneak around a bit and pick out things that they should send in specialists for. Whilst investigators do rely mostly on stealth, they are capable of defending themselves in a fight, which they often end up having to do if the player is on the ball. Well, they tend not to look for fights themselves, that's not what they're there to do. Uh, the most damaging thing they can do to you as the player is to find out what you're doing and report back to the Force of Justice to get stronger and more specialist agent types sent your way. So here we can see she's sneaking through the lair. Uh, there's a guard patrol approaching but she's hiding. Now it's worth noting that she's hiding physically by staying out of their line of sight, but we are also implementing a system where she could, if she wanted, disguise herself as a minion and just hide in plain sight. And some of those disguises are going to be very effective um, and some of them are going to be pretty obviously bad to the player, um, but nonetheless fairly effective against your standard minions. Here we have a security camera up here, don't we, in the scene as well? Which, I mean, you, can, you can add to your, your lair as well, can't we? So. We have a whole security network system uh, that's in the game. Uh, basically, this allows minions to monitor harder to access parts of the lair. They are fallible. If your minions are lazy or tired, they probably won't notice what's going on behind the cameras. But as you progress, as you train up your minions, as you make your lair more efficient, they'll more reliably spot these investigators. There's a slight continuity error here. The camera's facing that way, and then when she's pictured, the camera's actually filming her from the other side. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. We put that in on purpose. We put that, that is entirely intentional. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just, it framed better that way. These are our male and female guards. We are including male and female versions of every minion. We have a random minion generator, essentially, that can cover all genders and ethnicities. Yeah, it's something our character artist suggested earlier on, and um, it's been a really good call, actually, because, of course, evil is an equal opportunity employer. Also, we, I just called it a minion generator, but this also applies to agents, so the agents will be completely generated as well. And they'll have their own little personality quirks, their own little traits that determine the kinds of things they're looking for when you're there, or the kinds of things they need to stay happy. So I guess a natural segue from the security system is the trap networks. Um, so in addition to um, training up and arming your minions so you can um, fight the forces of justice directly, you can also lay a series of traps. This is one of the features I'm, to be honest, most excited about. Um, it allows us to put in a series of slapstick elements. We can force agents through a set of damaging traps. So here we see that the fan trap is blowing an agent. Now this might just blow them straight into a wall where they take some damage, or if the player is smart, they can set it up to try to blow the agent through either a laser wall or ultimately into a shark tank. So these are three new traps for Evil Genius 2. I think it's worth mentioning that there are almost the counterparts in Evil Genius 1. The fan trap that we have here is a counterpart of the wind machine from Evil Genius 1, and we 
decided to upgrade the piranha trap from piranhas to sharks. Yes, I think it was important in the trailer just to kind of show these in very, very quick succession. You can see the kind of the, the as you say, the chaining effect. You know, and the agent does a good job of uh, avoiding the most of it, but kind of eventually falls foul of the shark tank. The aim is that these traps will potentially wear down the better agents. So while some agents might just be able to disable these traps and work through them, um, after a while you will start beating them down, working them into a state where they can be hit by any trap. Yes, don't rely on a single trap network, guys. Build lots. I think going back to this scene here, I think this kind of demonstrates that you essentially play the evil genius yourself, don't you? So you're, you're always, it's up to you to keep an eye on your lair and see what agents are doing, but you can employ henchmen, I believe, to assist you. Yes, so there are a number of henchmen that you can recruit uh, in the game. Now these are your named characters, your big, scary right-hand soldiers. Um, they will start life as crime lords on the world map, and you'll be able to engage with them, go back and forwards a bit on that world map, trying to out-crime them effectively. Then bring them into your organisation and build up a cadre of henchmen. So yeah, so we've got a range of henchmen um, the player can choose from as the game progresses, and the idea is that you can use those henchmen to either um, bolster up some of your, your weaker areas or to augment some of your strengths. So if you've gone for a very strong muscle play style, then maybe you want muscle henchmen, or maybe you want uh, ones that are better at um, deception to operate in your cover operation and try to just um, make that a little less of a weak link in your defense chain. Just for anybody who has played Evil Genius 1, we've got a couple of returning characters as well, which I am personally very excited about. This end sequence is, I guess, showing the big picture of how, what, you know, you, how you have to manage from a corridor and room level to an entire base, to the cover operation, through to the actual, the world itself. The world can be yours if you get it right. We won't talk about what happens if you get it wrong. <laughs> So we're really excited to talk more about Evil Genius 2 in the coming weeks and months. Um, in the meantime, please do uh, get in touch with us with your thoughts and what you'd like to see and what you're excited about for Evil Genius 2 uh, through our social media channels in the links below. <laughs>